All right, and welcome back. So let's do some drawing. This is uh, part two to my first free drawing lesson. So before you start drawing with me, it is essential that you've done the hand drawing and the face drawing uh, before I start teaching you stuff so you can document your progress. So please don't cheat or you will be disappointed with the results. So just to review, you should have done a hand drawing that's to the best of your ability, like this one on the left. Part one of this um, lesson goes through what I'm looking for. And then you should have also done your before self-portrait. We'll be doing the afters way later after I've taught you a whole bunch of stuff. So I don't care how terrible these are. I don't care how great they are. Just the best of your ability. Uh, draw your hand and your face. And there's a whole bunch of requirements in that. So watch part one of um, of the free videos uh, lesson one so you know what you're doing all right so hopefully you've done that already let's click ahead to what's next all right so um uh in the email that i sent you so that you could find this lesson at the towards the bottom of it uh is a printable version of this worksheet so i'm gonna uh, talk about some other things regarding this but you'll need this so if you haven't printed this out you can now there are some of you that might actually have bought the workbook already. If you know you want to do this class and you bought the workbook, this is meant to be drawn in. So you can actually draw right in this workbook. So this is where we're starting. We're not going to do every page of this workbook, but this is one we're going to do. And like I said, um, we're all, um, it is a requirement to buy this book to... Um, uh, to uh, benefit the, the the author of this book and I'll be working with my own curriculum through this to help you get the best um, information you can out of it. I've gone ahead and printed this out as well because what I like to be able to do is put the picture we're going to be drawing right next to these boxes. So what we're going to be doing is for each one of these drawings by a famous artist, for instance, this is an, an Henri Matisse uh, drawing and this is a close-up of his drawing. If you look, this section right here is a close-up of this section right here. The next drawing we're going to be doing is a Vincent van Gogh, um, and the close-up of that is this section right here, which is an extreme close-up of one of the lines he's made in this drawing. Um, down here we have Delacroix, and uh, if you look at this knee shape right here, this leg shape, that's what we're seeing right here. And I'm actually going to zoom in for this when we're doing this lesson in just a minute. And then um, Ben Sean here, this is uh, a close-up of, I mean, a, a full full drawing of his. And then this is a close-up you can see on this left sleeve here. And you'll notice each one of these drawings has what we call different line quality. So our very first lesson is going to be not really in what we're drawing, but how we're drawing, how we're using our drawing tools. And we don't think about that very much. Uh, but it's something that artists think about a lot. What kind of line am I making? How dark is it? How light is it? What part of the pencil am I using to make that mark? Is it a fast mark? Is it a slow mark? Which direction does it point? Does it start dark and get light like these do? Does it start, uh, it, does it do the opposite? Um, is it a curvilinear line, meaning it's curvy? Uh, is it a straight line? Is it a jagged line that, that's shaky like these? And these would all be made using different techniques. And uh, you might not think you want to use all these lines, but there's many, many, many more ways you can make marks, which is what we're going to be doing in this bottom section. All right, so that's what we're going to be doing. I'm actually going to pause for just a second and let you print these out if you have not, or open your workbook, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, hopefully you got that information in front of you. What I've got behind me right here is the email that I'm going to be sending you as soon as you send me your email so that I can write back to you and give you this first lesson for free. If you look, um, this is still in progress. I'm still putting this together as I make these first few lessons, which will go here really soon. But if you look right down here, it says music for first lesson. Um, because of copyright infringement, I can't include the music, but this is a link to the Spotify playlist that you can click over to and actually listen uh, to this music. So this is the playlist, and um, we're going to be using this music to kind of help us get a, a tempo. So if you have a Spotify account, you'll be able to play this, and there's a link that will open up 
this uh, playlist that I already created. The first one is uh, Mirror in the Bathroom by The English Beat, if you know that song. Um, and if you don't have Spotify, you could just YouTube these songs or find them and just have them open. And I'll give you a, a moment to cue these up in just a second. And you can just pause the video and we'll uh, draw along to this music tempo. I won't be able to play it because of copyright stuff, but that's okay, you can. Uh, the second one is Monk Stream by Thelonious Monk. The third one is Rain by Mark Copeland. And then the fourth one is Underground by Tom Waits. So some very different music, uh, but music and art, as music is an art, visual art and music, which is a sound art, work together very much. And there's a lot of similarity between um, visual art and auditory art. And we'll talk about that as time progresses a little bit. But anyway, open up. Uh, this playlist, if you've got Spotify, if not, try to find these four songs and you can just pause the video to see what they are if you if you forgot and uh, have these ready because it's really going to help you to have that tempo ready as we draw together. OK, I'll be right back. All right, so I zoomed in on this and I'm sorry it's not the cr most crisp picture, but you're going to be looking at your handout. OK, so when you're looking to actually draw this, I want you looking at your handout not mine. You can look and see what I'm doing as we follow along. But we are going to draw these marks. Now I want to remind you, these marks are a close-up of this drawing, right? These are by Matisse, French dude, um, impressionist painter and artist. And uh, what we're going to be trying to do is copy the marks that he made the way he made them. All right. So I zoomed in the best I can to make this work. And we're going to be making these marks really quickly, really quickly. I'm going to demonstrate this and then I'm going to ask you to do it. You're going to use the first song in the Spotify playlist, which is uh, Mirror in the Bathroom by the English Beat for this song. And it is a fast song. It goes about this fast. I would like you to try to make a mark every beat. So if you're not very musical, it's just like mark, 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 mark. All right, I, I, you know, I, can't, I can't play the music, but this is your cue to go ahead and turn your music on so it's playing while I'm talking and you can kind of listen to the tempo of the song and um, watch me as I draw this. Now, some things to think about. Look at the direction of the line. This line's going up. These are starting to kind of spiral out like, the, uh, like lines on a clock. This is a longer line. This is a darker line. These lines are getting lighter as they come out. So the way I'm going to make these is I'm going to work really fast and I'm going to be kind of flicking my pencil out. I'm going to look at the direction of the line and I'm going to look at the darkness of the line. We're going to try to draw this shape as we do it. So as we approach this, a good question to ask when you're drawing something besides how dark is the line? What direction is the line? What kind of line is it? What part of the pencil is being used to make it? The answer for this one is the tip. Um, is what does it look like? To me, this kind of looks like an angel or a seahorse. Not two things we always think of as looking at the same, but notice this kind of looks like a crown. This kind of looks like a chest and legs. These kind of look like maybe um, lines and wings or the edge of a comb or to me, it kind of looks like a seahorse. Like here's the seahorse's head, the curve in his back, and these lines. So we're not asking what it looks like in order to then find a symbol in our head to draw it. But as we're drawing it, we can kind of go, hey, we know that this should kind of curve. These should be kind of angling up, kind of like a seahorse or like an angel. So the tempo's like this. Watch me, and then when you feel confident, I want you to do this drawing as fast as you can. All right, so this will be a real fast one. So I'm going to um, I'm going to draw mainly in this area. I'm going to try to fit the whole thing in, and I'm going to work quickly. So as I'm doing this, these lines are super dark. So as I'm drawing them, I'm just going to go up. Oh, and my pencil broke right away. <laughs> okay, I'm going to pause, sharpen my pencil, and we'll be right back. All right, we're ready to start. And I I did mention before we're using pencil, not pen, and do not use a mechanical pencil here. Use like a regular school pencil, or if you have a drawing pencil, use an HB. All right, so quick movements up. I'm trying to make a line for every beat. If you're playing the music along, you kind of know the tempo. I'm looking at the angle of these, and then these kind of double back. Now these lines are vertical. There's some vertical lines in here, and I'm looking at where they are. Don't worry about getting every line perfect, but try to make a line for every beat and increase the darkness where they get darker. 
We're not coloring in. These are all individual lines that, um, that Matisse has made here. And we're almost done within 30 seconds of drawing this. Now, if yours doesn't look just like mine, that's okay. And if you haven't started drawing yet, that's okay. You can do it with me or right after me, however you feel confident. Now look back and forth and see what looks different. Um, this could be a little darker. I know this isn't quite as in focus as I would like it. It's because I'm zoom zoomed in so far. Sorry about that. And I'm feeling pretty good about this. So really quick lines, looking at the difference in intensity by pushing. I think this part could come out a little bit more. A few stray lines here I missed, a few diagonals here I missed. And that's pretty much what I'm looking for for the Matisse marks. All right, I'm gonna pause here, set up for the next one. Why don't you go ahead and do your drawing now? Try to do it definitely within the length of the song, maybe within about 30 seconds, okay? A mark every second, follow the shape, follow the direction, follow the darkness. Okay, we're back and we're ready for the next drawing, which is gonna be these Van Gogh marks that we're gonna be doing in the box that says Van Gogh marks. So remember, this, is a, these lines are a close-up of some of the curvy lines we're seeing here. I think I fixed my focus a little bit for you guys, so hopefully that's a little bit better than it was before. And hopefully those lines didn't show up for you. Here we go. Just figuring out some of the software with you. So for this one, we are going to be using the second song, which is Monk, Monk's Dream Take 8 by Thelonious Monk. And that one has a tempo more like... So it's a little slower than the last one. We're gonna be trying to make a mark about every beat. Now notice these are all curvy lines. Some of them start dark and become light towards the end, which is a quick uh, movement, kind of lifting up on your pencil while you make these marks. So remember, we're trying to do different types of marks and this lesson is all about line quality. Every lesson that I teach you is gonna have a different purpose. This one is to learn about different types of marks you can make with the same drawing tool. That's line quality, how they look, with the direction of the line, the type of line, curved or straight or many other things, um, the intensity of the line, light to dark, dark to light, staying dark, staying light, and which part of the tool we're using. We're staying with the tip with this one. Okay, so for this one, if you haven't done it yet, you can queue up Monk's Dream, take eight, with a tempo of about this. I'm gonna try to make a mark for each line. Again, I'm looking at the overall shape. Uh, it's kind of, everything kind of fits within a rectangle. And then I'm actually gonna look at the individual lines. Like to me, these lines kind of looks like, like an owl eye. Here's the top of the brow, here's the curve. I'm actually gonna draw the lines that I see. This is a letter C, this is a letter G. So asking yourself what letter or numbers things looks like is helpful too. You might think, why are you caring what these lines look like? Because these are close-ups of bigger pictures. And so when we can focus on what the little lines look like, like a puzzle, it will create the big lines. Now that's not really what we're trying to do right now so much, but it is what we're trying to do when we draw. So I'm gonna start right around here, and I know that this is the top of my shape. It's gonna kind of fit in this area. So here I go, I'm gonna push hard and then light. And we're using our number two pencil, or our HB pencil, depending on what you've got and I'm looking at the lines. I'm, notice my tempo is slower than before. I'm actually drawing at a certain speed. Push harder to get your lines darker. And you can go a little bit slower if you need to, to get your lines to look like what they should. So I'm right here drawing these lines. After you've watched me a little bit, you don't need to watch me draw this entire shape, but that's what I'm doing. And if you'd like to, you can. And then you, whenever you feel like it, put on your music and draw line by line, shape by shape. Now notice mine's a little bit bigger than what, what I've got here. Don't worry about that so much. Just worry about getting the intensity of the line, the direction of the line, the tone of the line, how light and dark it is, and the shape. If you get lost, you know, stop for a minute and look back where you were and just try to draw these in. Don't take more than a minute or two to do this drawing. Don't worry about it being perfect. Just try your best. That's all I'm asking. Okay, I'm gonna focus on what I'm doing and you can either watch the rest of this or go ahead and do your drawing now. I 
I'm filling in these ones that I'm missing, just seeing if there's anything I forgot. There's a couple in here that look pretty, pretty similar. I think some of my marks could be a little darker. You can go over them a second time if you want them to be darker and push a little harder, a little slower. And that's pretty good. That's I'm happy with that. And if the, yours looks that great, we can move on to the next one. I'm going to pause here and set up the next drawing. If you're still working or ready to work, go ahead and do it. All right, we are ready for the third rectangle. If you didn't finish your last one, just pause the video, finish it, and then you can re uh, rewatch the video when you're ready for the next one. So our next song is going to be Rain by Mark Copeland and Gary Peacock and Bill Stewart. Um, and the tempo of that one is even slower. So we're looking at a tempo more like really slow. So remember, tempo is the speed at which we're drawing. So we're going to try to make a mark at about that pace. So this next drawing is Delacroix, who did um, lots of religious drawings. Notice this big leg right here is what we're drawing a close-up of. It's here. That's what we're looking at. We're going to leave out these feet and uh, some of these other elements. Um, we can ask ourselves what overall shape is it. It's kind of within a triangle, right? Most of the lines are fairly straight, but they're at different angles. Most of them are thin lines and uh, they change direction. So some are curvy, some are angling up to the right, some are angling to the left. A lot of them have these little hooks at the top. Not a lot of change in darkness between the beginning and the ends of the lines. Um, now I do see a lot of change in darkness here, but we're gonna go by this close up, okay? So that's what we're gonna be going for. And that really slow, deliberate mark making, all right? So that's what we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna slide this back in here and see if I can get this all lined up for you which is a little trickier than you might think. All right, so here we go. Um, and that's the wrong one. Here we go. It's hard when you do these close-ups. So here it is. And if you're ready, you can watch and draw along with me. I'm going to just figure out where this is going to be, kind of in this area. I'm going to start with this line. And this time I'm drawing much more deliberately and much more slowly. I'm using the tip of my tool again, which is what we've done so far. I'm looking at the length, I'm looking at the direction, I'm looking at where these lines are. If you get lost, go to a different part. So I'm going to move to this part to make sure it all fits. That's a good trick when you're drawing, by the way, is move around a drawing. Don't just start from line to line. Um, move around to different parts of it to help it to fit on the page. I'm going to be giving you lots of tips on how to make your drawing lines in the right spot to help your proportion fit. But for, for now, that's a good one. It's just move around the drawing. Don't stay in one spot. So now I'm going to move all the way over to the side here and do some of these vertical lines like this one. So my eye is right here. That's what I'm drawing is this vertical one. And if you feel like you can do this at this point, go ahead. If you feel like you need to watch a little bit more, that's fine too. However you want to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and put in these last few lines. And then there's a few stray lines here. Notice I'm going a lot slower. Mark, 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 mark. Kind of a pace like that. I'm looking at these vertical lines. I'm looking at the length of them. I'm noticing they're a little shaky. So I'm letting my hand get a little shaky as I go along. And that's looking pretty good. I think there's a few here that I've missed. They're different lengths. They're kind of moving to the right as they go. Here's some more that I've missed. I'm going to throw these in. And I'm missing all of these. As long as this is taking and as careful as I'm being, this is like a 45 second to one minute drawing. It's not a, not a super long drawing. So if you're feeling confident, go ahead and do your square. If you want to watch me draw the whole thing, you can. If that's torture for you, you can move ahead a little bit until we're done with this. And I'm just going to look for some changes in tone, and I'm feeling pretty good about that. Right? I'm going to pause it. We'll set up the next one. If you haven't started yet, go ahead and set up your music, and let's do this drawing next. All right, we're on to our last one where we're looking at something while we draw it. This artist's name is Ben Sean. Just to review. It's this very shaky kind of symbol-y childlike looking drawing we're seeing. 
If you look really closely, I'm going to try to move this really far in, you'll notice that some of these lines are really shaky and jagged, um, especially along here when we look at the close-ups. You might not think this is a desirable look, but there's times where you want different types of line. Smooth and beautiful isn't always what we're going after. Sometimes we want kind of shaky, unstable, and what we would consider almost an ugly line, if such a, such a thing could exist. You know, think about bark, think about branches. They're not smooth and perfect. Uh, they look a little bit more like this. So for this one, I'm gonna ask you to do some weird stuff. All right, so, so far we've been using the tip of the pencil. We're gonna do that again here. Um, but the other thing we're gonna be doing is holding this kind of the wrong way that you've been taught. So this time I'd like you to hold it really close to the tip with a fist, kind of like a shank. I'm trying to back this up so you can see because I'm, I have my camera really close, but we're gonna hold this with a fist. So we're gonna be drawing and as you draw, you'll notice if you push with your tip and kind of shake your hand just a little, you can really get a jagged line like this. Now for this one, we're gonna be listening to this really slow Tom Waits song which is Underground by Tom Waits. So if you haven't queued that up, see if you can. It's really slow. Now we're not really gonna be making individual lines as much as long, jagged lines as we do this. There are a few individual lines here and there, um, but as you're doing it, this is gonna be hard to show you shaking and letting you see my, my tip, because I'm holding, this is what it would really look like if I'm holding my pencil straight. And if I do this too hard, I'm gonna break my tip. But I'm gonna to try to kind of shake my hand a little bit. You can see it really shaking as I draw this to try to accomplish this jagged line. So not just what part of the pencil we use, but how we use the pencil. I'm bracing my arm on my table as I do this, but I'm trying to get a little bit of that jagged craziness that Ben Sean gets in his drawings. So I'm doing it here. I'm looking at the line direction. And if it's a really shaky line, I'm shaking my hand more. If it's a less shaky line, I'm shaking my hand less. Now you could accomplish this in different ways, but I'd really like you to try drawing with a fist because the way you hold your drawing tool is gonna to completely change what your line looks like. There's times you might wanna hold your tool from the very end, not for this drawing, but so we're holding it really close and this isn't gonna take very long, but we're working really slowly and carefully and really pushing and shaking your hand. It's kind of the opposite of everything you've been taught about drawing probably up to this point, where we try to make really smooth, perfect lines and even simplify a line to try to make it more, look more smooth and beautiful as you draw. Don't do that. Try to draw these jagged, crazy lines like you're seeing for Ben Sean. If you haven't done that yet, let's cue up Underground by Tom Waits. Notice this was a really fast drawing. There's not a lot of information there to convey, though I do think I missed a few lines that I can go back in and kind of add, and if you missed some, you can do that too. If you haven't started drawing yet, let's do it now. When you feel like you're done, go back and forth and look for anything you missed. Notice, this looks like a Y. This looks like an F. This looks like kind of another Y shape. Um, this looks like a backwards E. And not just any E though, copy the weird one you see. Try to draw line by line, shape by shape, while you're shaking your hand around. I'll pause this, set up the next drawing, and go ahead and do that one now. All right, so if you haven't finished your last drawing, just pause the video at this point. If you did finish the drawing, we're ready for our next one, which is make your own marks. And I'm gonna give you some that I want you to do for this. The first thing we're gonna do is kind of grid this into a few boxes so we have lots of different opportunities to make marks here. So just about halfway, which is really between these lines, just pull a line kind of towards you and we're gonna kind of make this cut in half. It's probably the worst line I've ever made in my life. By the way, to make a straight line, just kind of pull towards yourself and you normally make a pretty straight line. I didn't just now, and it's because my paper is at an angle, but that's okay, no excuses here. It's okay if your line is terrible too. Now we're just gonna kind of cut this in half um, horizontally. And then we're gonna do another one here, and then another one here. We've got room for eight different types of marks now. All right, so we have already made really four different types of marks. We've made some curvilinear lines. We've made some vertical um, dark lines. We've made kind of these medium thickness uh, scraggly lines, and we've made these really dark shaky lines. 
um, all looking at different speeds and different ways to use our tools. So what I'd really like you to do, and I'm gonna give you a few to try here, uh, let's try to see what marks we can make that we haven't already made. So let's avoid the ones we've made and um, let's try a couple different things. So remember the way you hold your pencil can completely change the type of mark it makes. So for this one, let's hold your pencil really low to the ground and let's try to make some kind of jagged lines. Now notice if I pull my pencil up and then towards me, it makes skinny, fat, skinny, fat. And I can kind of go in between those to make different types of lines. And if you notice as I do that, it kind of goes from dark to light as I do it. So just experiment and see what you can do with a sideways mark. Maybe start with the ones I made and then within this box, see what else you can do. What happens if you spiral it? You know, what happens if you make parallels? So within each box, just experiment with what I'm showing you. See what you can come up with. You might come up with something no one's ever come up with before. That sounds pretty far-fetched, but that's how we get new ideas, right? Trying something new. All right, so for this one, we use the edge of the pencil. You might still be doing that. I'm going to move on to my next box. So remember we said that uh, holding your pencil differently can really give you different types of lines. This time, let's hold it from the eraser really far away. So there's almost no pressure here because I'm holding it all the way down at the end. So I'm going to have a really light amount of pressure here. And let's try to make some lines holding it by the end. Maybe make some curvy, scraggly lines that way. Maybe make some quick parallel lines that way. Notice they all have a really light quality to them and they're really loose and kind of chaotic because I'm so far away. See what else you can do by holding it by the end. What happens if you kind of uh, maybe tap it while you're holding the end? There's a technique called stippling where you make little dots to make um, to make tone or to make texture and you can try stippling in there. Experiment by holding it um, from the end on, on this, this one. And you can even write end, side, if you want to remember what you did. For this one, let's try um, stippling. So stippling is where you kind of tap your pencil. If you make your dots equally apart, now I'm holding mine at a slight angle, which is giving me kind of line dots. If you hold it completely vertical, you'll have more individual dots. Notice they're a little lighter. These were a little darker. What if you hit really hard? That's going to give you a different type of mark. I don't know if you can see that. If I zoom in, it's making some really dark, dark, um, deep lines there. So this is where I held it at an angle. This is straight down. This is hitting it really hard. Um, stippling can be used to actually create tone in a drawing. And so if you make your dots closer together, I'm gonna to do kind of the angled ones, you can create a darker tone. And then if you meet, leave more space between them, it creates a lighter tone. So see what you can do with stippling in there and tapping. Um, and you can also just experiment with some different types of taps. Maybe you can come up with something I didn't. Like what if you push away from me while you tap versus pushing towards you while you tap? That's away. That's towards me. Notice these have like light tails. These have dark tails. Maybe you can even try to make like kind of a spiral as you tap. It's starting to become a pretty big mess, but that's okay. Let's put stippling. By the way, a secret, I'm a terrible speller. I'm not sure if this has two P's or one, but there you go. All right, so another thing we can do, this is uh, this is pretty cool. So we, we already drew with the side. Let's draw with the side again. And this time, let's, um, instead of trying to make individual lines, let's kind of just shade this in. And then as you, after you've kind of shaded the whole thing in, you could either get that really smooth or then you can kind of go across with other lines and make darker sections. Those are very different types of lines than we've made anywhere else. Different lines can be used for different techniques. So see what kinds of marks you can make on top of this that look good. I'm, I'm kind of using mainly wide lines in this rectangle. So I'm going to put side wide here. 
And then I'm only going to show you, I think, one more type of line, and then I'm going to ask you to experiment in these other ones. So each time, think about a different way to hold the pencil, a different part of the tip to use, a different drawing technique. Think about what you could do to do things a little bit differently. So on this last one that I'm going to show you, let's just shade this in like we did before. And here's a part of the pencil you might not have thought of as a drawing tool before. Let's use our eraser to draw a line in this dark area. When you're drawing hair or highlights in skin, a lot of times I'm going to encourage you to draw with your eraser on a dark surface to remove tone. So erasers aren't just for mistakes, they can create lines. Check it out. If I kind of drag my eraser across here, I can create a light line on a dark surface. I could actually make different types of lines with my eraser and actually draw by removing tone. Right here, I've removed about half the tone. If I really stay on a spot, it's going to get a lot lighter. You could also stipple with your eraser over a tone like this. You could make little tapping marks. This can be really good for texture in stone or skin. And I'm not saying just randomly do this. We would look at what we're drawing and we'll talk a lot more about that but um, different ways to do that. See what you can do by experimenting with your eraser as a tool. And I said that was gonna be our last one. I did wanna talk about one more. Um, and this is more of a shading technique, kind of like stippling is normally a shading technique, but it doesn't have to be. So crosshatching is where you're making parallel lines to create tone. So the closer together your lines become, the darker your tone appears. Notice as my lines are becoming closer and closer together, it's like a grayscale, light to dark. Another way to go even darker with your grayscale, I'm just going to make some more lines here, is to push harder, right? You knew that, because we've already done that. Another way is to add another line going another direction. So if I make my lines going this direction, let's only do this halfway up it becomes darker. This part is darker than that part. If you now go at another angle, like adding a diagonal in, it's going to go even darker than it did before, right? And guess what you can do to make it darker? You can go in another direction. So this is kind of like just coloring in, except you're doing it with parallel lines, which is called crosshatching. And like I said, it's a shading technique, but it's also the, notice how different these lines look than in everything else we've done. There could be a time where you want to crosshatch to create a different type of mark. So you've got two more boxes. I'd like you to experiment with these and really see what you can do to, uh, to make something look interesting. All right, if you haven't finished that yet, you can pause the video and finish that up and then um, come back and, and watch the rest in a, in a minute. But anyway, that's our first lesson. So what you've learned today is a little bit of drawing what you see because we're drawing all these things that we saw and we're actually trying to draw the shapes and the tones and the line direction and the line quality. We're going to be doing a lot more of this if you stick with me. If this is something you want to pursue and you'd like to see that amazing progress between those before and afters, um, the email I sent you has a little place at the bottom where you can um, you can pay me either during from PayPal or from uh, Venmo and um, either of those is just fine. Um, the entire set of all my lessons is $100, which um, is actually insanely cheap. That's about the price of less than two private lessons. And it's about 28 lessons that I'm going to walk you through. And you will see that unbelievable improvement. If you want to do that, you're going to need the workbook. So it, read the email I sent. It has all the things you're going to need. Um, and I, um, when you go to click on the things you need to buy on Amazon, you'll see that there's a a little, a little note I made about what you need and what you don't need. So you don't need everything, but I put a whole bunch of cool stuff in there in case you really want to get yourself some nice drawing tools. But if you want to stay on a budget, you absolutely can. So you don't need to buy a lot of fancy stuff. But you do need to buy this book. It's going to have some tools in it that we're going to be using beyond just some handouts. There's going to be a clear window with some lines on it that we're going to be using for some drawing. So you need this uh, if you want to do that. If you, this isn't your thing, that's okay. But if, uh, if you really want, want to come along for this ride and see that crazy improvement, um, I've taught literally thousands of students through the years and they have seen the improvement and you can too. So anyway, really excited for this. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Um, 
And uh, if you do join the class, there's some places to actually turn in your work so I can give you some feedback and you can ask me questions as, as we go along. All right. Thanks a lot. I'm Tim Ellis. I hope you enjoyed my lesson and I will see you next time.